My husband cheated with our son's girlfriend. Now, I'm determined to end our marriage and rebuild my life. I, 41F, am a stay-at-home mom. My husband, 48M, whom we'll call Paul, works in finance. We have been married for nearly 20 years. We have two kids, whom we'll call Eric, our 18-year-old son, currently a senior in high school, and Mary, our 15-year-old daughter. They are both the lights of my life. My marriage with my husband has grown somewhat stale over the years for a myriad of reasons, such as his work schedule and how I've aged poorly since we first met. Our son Eric has a girlfriend, 18F, whom he's been dating since they were freshmen in high school. We'll call her Amy. Eric absolutely adores Amy. She's his first love and she's someone I've always considered as family. This makes the whole situation emotionally excruciating for me. Last week I inadvertently saw my husband's phone screen and got a glimpse of a text thread between my husband and Amy, our son's girlfriend and I read what looked like a message of her telling him that she misses sucking his big can. I froze in place in complete disbelief. I spent most of the day convincing myself that I must have misread what I saw. However, I didn't misread it because, over the last several days, I discovered a file on his computer filled with tons of adult videos. He clearly has an adult videos addiction. He also has saved photos of Amy from her Instagram on his computer. Although they weren't inappropriate, she was fully clothed. It was still the proof I needed to confirm that I wasn't going crazy. I also looked at his phone during opportune moments and saw more of their interactions. I wish I had never looked. They were filled with mean, horrible things said at my expense with him constantly comparing me to her. He would call me fat and old, among other things, with Amy lollings, had hunches, a wee wee's killings that Paul has been cheating on me, but never in a million years could I have fathomed something like this. Last month, I found a thong in our bedroom that I know wasn't mine. I turned a blind eye to it, being naive and acting like it was maybe our daughter's even though that made zero sense. Not only is he cheating on me, but he's betraying our son. I'm completely devastated, I don't even think words can adequately describe the dread, anger, shock I feel right now. I'm totally overwhelmed on how to handle this because obviously action needs to be taken, but I'm terrified of what kind of psychic blow this will be for my son. I have no idea how to even broach this completely fucked up topic with him. I wouldn't wish this predicament on my worst enemy. I can't even believe I married this scumbag in the first place. And then my mind started to race, realizing that I started noticing specifically unusual behavior from him around the same time Amy turned 18. Was he waiting for her to turn 18 before pursuing this affair? There's so many layers to all of this and I'm completely paralyzed with fear and dread about it all. None of it makes any fucking sense. How did this happen? Am I that much of a stupid idiot that I let all of this happen under my watch? Eric adores Amy and the thought of revealing this sickening truth to him terrifies me. The impact on his young heart and mind could be devastating. My heart aches for Eric and Mary who are completely innocent bystanders. I haven't confronted my husband about this because I'm frankly scared of the domino effect. I don't know who to turn to first about this. I share my story not for sympathy, but in search of understanding and perhaps advice from those who might have had to grapple with deep betrayal. Thank you for listening. Update, I am divorcing my husband. I told my kids and I spoke with Amy's mom. My brother connected me to a very tough junkyard dog type lawyer. I saved screenshots of all his conversations with Amy, so I was only able to get the last three months from my cloud. The conversations were mostly flirty and dirty talk. It was hard to stomach, completely sleazy, and I saw several negative things said about me. His call history showed he talks with her for hours pretty consistently. He uses dating apps. I took screenshots of his profiles and all of the active chats has with his matches. It's very clear he uses a filter to seek out girls who are 18 to 22 or so. I copied all of his files from the computer. He goes on sex chat rooms and forums, and he spends a ton of money on OnlyFans. I rummaged through every possible hiding spot I could think of in the house. He had various toys, blindfolds, cuffs, lubricants, etc. He also had different outfits which looked kind of like a girl's Catholic school uniform and a French maid type outfit too. I picked up Eric and Mary from school, and we all drove to my brother's. They were able to sense something was Ari when I picked them up. I delicately told them the entire situation, and I broke down crying. Mary had the most anger, even more than Eric. I met with Amy's mother and told her everything. She confiscated Amy's phone and gave me the entire chat log. It only dated back three months ago like on my husband's cloud, almost as if they both deleted the messages at the same time. She told me Amy sobbed when confronted. Amy basically told her mother that she will never understand and that she and him are in love. I don't want to get into too many details with what else she was saying, but suffice to say, it's very easy to assume that my husband slowly and methodically became a sage-like figure in her life, making her feel she could rely on him, and he took advantage of the fact that she came from a broken home. Amy is also non-stop insistent that their friendship only became romantic-slash-physical recently, and before that, she said he was more of a friend and mentor. I confronted Paul over Zoom. The look on his face was scary. She became red and looked so sweaty, he had anger and panic in his eyes. 
His tone of voice was very defensive and frightening. He kept yelling the word context over and over again, and that none of that happened. So he was unable to speak without constant stutters and intensity. Nothing really made any sense to me. I refused to tell him where I was, and he said I had no right to take his kids away from him. And then he abruptly left the Zoom. My lawyer is filing for temporary sole custody of Mary and a restraining order. The so Mary is still the most angry. She's totally furious with her dad and Amy. Justifiably so, of course. The so Mary is recollecting moments and times she watched her dad interact with her friends, and she's in knots about it. Eric is very clearly hurting, but he's so strong and very level-headed. He wants to see a therapist. The maturity my kids are showing makes me proud. They don't deserve this at all. We made the authorities aware of everything. I plan on being completely unforgiving and ruthless in this divorce. I'm reflecting on how I've been treated and how it's made me a shell of myself and how I've had a very negative opinion of myself because of him over the last 20 years. I don't want to let this scumbag get away with it. I want to reinvent myself and move on stronger than ever. Update number two, divorcing my husband who cheated on me with our son's 18-year-old girlfriend. Update on Amy, Eric, and Mary. Thank you again for all the love and encouragement. It gives me comfort and means so much to me. I've received many comments and messages accusing me of faking this story, which oddly also provides comfort because all of this feels unreal even to me. It validates my own feelings that there are people out there who can't even fathom this being true. I wish it were fake. I've been focusing on and worrying about how others are feeling over this, somewhat ignoring my own feelings which I'm trying to change. I range from anger to numbness like a light switch. We're all safe and still at my brother's house. We're very careful. And his house is secured. Paul has tried to call my cell phone several times a day. I am refusing to interact with him, and I will have my lawyer handle all correspondence. He scares me, frankly. My brother has a very secure house with an alarm system and deadbolt locks. We feel safe with him. Both my son and I got checked out and tested. It appears so far that we're both clean based on the immediate rapid tests, but in the coming days, we'll know for certain when the lab results come in. I'm not overly concerned. Eric is scheduled to see a therapist early next week which is very good and needed. He's not himself right now. He seems a bit shell-shocked, and I am concerned. He internalizes a lot, and it's hard to get a read on what's going on in his head. That being said, he's thoughtful and has been talking with me, asking me how I'm doing and everything. He's not interested in corresponding with his dad at all. He calls only my cell phone, and he hasn't tried to reach out to either Eric or Mary. I get the sense that Paul is extremely nervous. He's scared, and I think he deep down knows that if investigated thoroughly, he would be in big trouble. That's what my gut is telling me. I still think about the Zoom call with him, and the more I think about it, the more it looked like he was a man whose entire world was crashing down on him. The panic in his face was very apparent. I offered Mary for me to make an appointment with a therapist as well, but she doesn't want to see one yet. She said she's open to it eventually but wants time to herself. She's been asking her friends about her dad and if they experienced any creepiness from him. Her friends were open and honest with her, and apparently they felt like he stared a lot and sensed his hovering presence whenever they were over. One of Mary's friends went so far as to say that she felt like he was checking her out a lot, like looking at her rear and complimenting the color of her yoga pants. At the time, no issue was brought up about it, but in light of everything that has been happening, it seems strange now. He would sit himself in different areas or vantage points to get a good view of her, she claimed. He also asked questions about what kind of friend group or which clique they were in at school. He kept asking about if they were popular girls. I'm completely embarrassed that they had this experience at our house. As for updates on Amy, which is the main reason why I wanted to write this update, I completely agree that she is also a victim. A lot of people have been emphasizing that, and I agree. I've done everything I could in my own power to indirectly get her opportunities to get help. Like I said, I told her mother, and she's been updating me on everything. Amy, unfortunately, is still living in her deluded reality and I can only pray that she'll eventually come to her senses. She doesn't want to see any doctors or therapists at all and has been constantly trying to reach Paul because, again, she believes that they are in love. From what I've been told, she hasn't been able to get hold of him and he's been avoiding communication with her completely. Amy blames me for that and believes I took away his devices and am very controlling. Any truth that her mother tries to convey to her is met with conspiracy theories and hostility. Amy looks at me as a villain and still sees Paul through rose-colored glasses. Her mother showed her screenshots of his dating app profiles and matches, and she refuses to believe it, saying I photoshopped it. According to her mom, Amy keeps saying things like everyone is just mad because she found herself a real man and that I'm jealous because she takes better care of him than I do. It's in line with some of the conversations I screenshot where a lot of what Paul says is him complaining about things I don't do for him sexually. Right now, she's insistent that she and Paul will be together in the long run? Ugh, he's honestly a slimeball. I can only hope that Amy comes to her senses, but me directly intervening doesn't feel like it would be productive at the moment, maybe eventually, though. 
Update number three. Divorce is underway. Eric's seeing a therapist routinely and Paul slash A meeting up again. The support, again, has been overwhelming and I'm very grateful. Sadly, I've received a lot of negative slash accusatory slash harassing private messages from people here who think I'm faking this story. Someone made a comment on some post somewhere, claiming that my story has been debunked, and people believe that person. I've seen an uptick in negative messages accusing me of making this up for money. I'm not asking for money at all. Coming here was completely rooted in emotional desperation, and I didn't expect anyone to get invested in my story this way. But again, I'm not looking for anything out of this. I have no reason to lie. I'm not gaining anything from this. If you don't believe me, that's fine, I don't care, but the only thing I ask is to not cross the line and start sending me private messages that are mean-spirited or accusatory. The only reason I'm continuing to post is because of those of you who've sent me love here, and the support really lifted my spirits. As for the divorce, it's very much underway. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it all because it's ongoing, and I want to make sure everything is going to go smoothly. I got temporary custody of Mary. Paul also has to pay temporary child support. There's a protective order. Paul can't contact us or come near us. Right now, we're just focusing on getting through this legal mess. Again, not getting into specifics because I don't want to mess anything up. But what I'll say is I'm very confident, divorce aside, that there's overwhelming evidence against Paul that will get him in serious trouble and it will impact him for the rest of his life. I'm sure eventually I can share more about that. I know a lot of people are concerned about his predatory ways, and I just wanted to convey this, even though I have to be vague right now. Justice will come. All of your concern about how my kids are doing psychologically means a lot to me. Eric has been to therapy twice over the last two weeks. I know some people thought I was dismissive of him and acting like he's doing okay. Was it okay? I very much know that he's hurting internally and we're doing everything we can to make sure he knows he is supported and loved. So my brother has been amazing in spending time with Eric and Mary and both of them have confided in him about a lot. My brother has a very healthy marriage and both he and his wife have really stepped to the pub to the plate for all of us. Mary has not seen a therapist yet but she promises that she will be open to seeing one soon. Her anger has mostly turned into sadness, I noticed, and I hope I can get her to see a therapist soon. Oh, our friends have played a key role in this whole thing, and that's something that Mary has been grappling with as well. I know a lot of people are invested in the well-being of Amy as well. There were a lot of questions about whether Eric and Amy would still see each other at school. Ah, um, it sounded like they go to the same school, but they do not. Ah. Uh? Eric and Amy went to the same junior high school and knew each other even then, but Amy ended up going to an all-girls Catholic high school while Eric, and Mary too, stayed in the public school system. We all lived in the same town, and over the summer heading into freshman year is when they were getting to know each other and when they started dating. I wish I had a better Amy update, but it's gotten a lot worse since the last update. Paul has actually been seeing Amy, despite her mother trying to force her not to see him. She tells me that Amy says she's 18 and an adult, and she can do what she wants. Her mother is in a precarious spot because if she kicks Amy out of the house for defying her, something that she has threatened to do, which I think is a mistake, she would just run to Paul permanently. The time she spends with Paul has increased over the last week, despite the fact that Paul initially ghosted her when all of this first hit the fan. There were some days where Amy would just be gone for hours on end. There's only so much I could do with the Amy situation, but again, I do believe things will turn around soon with that, given what I know about Paul and what's to come. I can only pray that Amy can get help and guidance when more shit hits the fan. I'm doing everything I can with my own kids and my own mental health, and Amy's mom knows she has my support, and that's all I could really provide. Next story, stepdaughter passed away, and then I caught my husband cheating with his ex-wife. But now she's gone too. My stepdaughter Becca, 14F, died four weeks ago. I've been in her life since she was seven years old. We were extremely close. My husband Derek, 40M, his ex-wife Sam, 38F, and I, 35F, get along very well. There's never been an issue in the seven years that I've been with Derek. Sam has always been kind to me. She didn't even care that Becca called me mom too. Right after Becca's passing, Sam had so much anxiety and depression that she was unable to be by herself. She has no family besides us, so we invited her to stay with us. Sam hardly leaves the house. She mostly just sleeps in Becca's room, which is completely understandable. I always tell her that I'm here if she needs me and that I want her to take her time with grieving and that there is no pressure to go back to her home. Today I needed to run some errands, so I asked Sam if she'd like to join me to get out of the house a little bit, but she declined and said she'd rather just stay at the house and sleep. I told Derek that I was leaving and that I would be back in two-ish hours. He works from home. I also told him to check on Sam every once in a while and maybe try getting her to eat something. Uh, after stopping at the post office, I realized I forgot my library book that I needed to return, so I went back home to get it. As soon as I walked in the door, I heard moaning coming from mine and Derek's bedroom. I immediately knew what was happening, 
and my heart completely broke in that moment. I wasn't completely sure what to do, but I ended up deciding to confront them. So I walked to the bedroom and opened the door and began yelling at them both. Sam started having an anxiety attack and ran to the bathroom while Derek kept apologizing profusely. I asked him what the hell was happening. He told me that he made himself and Sam some lunch and they began talking about Becca and shared some memories. And then Sam ended up kissing him and he didn't pull back. And then it ended with them in our bed. They're begging me to understand that it was just grief that caused them to become intimate and that they both made a mistake. I don't know what to do. I love this man. And I love Sam. I'm heartbroken that they did this to me and put me in this position. I feel so stuck. Update. I posted an update to r slash true off my chest, but didn't realize there was an update rule so it was removed. I figured I'd post an update to my profile for those that follow me. I decided that I'm filing for a divorce. I can't ever trust him again. It sucks because we had an amazing relationship, I thought. He's always been great, so this was a complete shock to me. Last night, Derek came over to talk. He confessed to a lot. Turns out it wasn't their first time sex like most people thought. They've been having sex since three months before Becca died. I am completely shocked and heartbroken. Sam also reached out last night and thanked me for everything I've done for her and told me she was sorry. I didn't respond, I blocked her. I did so much for Sam and considered her a friend so this hurts a lot more than I can handle. This is all too much. As hard as this is going to be, I need to leave Derek and cut them both out of my life. I am ready to do so. I am done. Also, some people are saying I deserve this, because I should have known better than to let Sam into our home, around Derek. But you need to understand that I'm a giving person, I trust people more than I should. I truly thought Sam was an amazing person. I know it's unusual to become friends with your husband's ex-wife, but it's just how it went for us and I shouldn't be blamed for what happened. Thank you to everyone who commented nice things and for the kind messages. You've all been helpful during this insanely difficult time, I appreciate it. Update 2 I'm getting questions about some things, so I figured I'd answer a few of them. Have I told anyone about what happened besides my mom? Yes, I told a few friends and some family members. Most of them are supportive of my decision and aren't speaking to Derek. Where is Derek staying? Currently, he's staying at a hotel. Our friends refused to let him stay with him. He's lost a lot of people due to his awful decision. Has he tried fighting me on getting divorce? Yes, he begged me not to file for divorce. But when I told him I needed him to just let me go and that I was too exhausted to fight him on this, he let it be and agreed to getting a divorce. Why isn't Derek staying with Sam? He told me he didn't want to continue to hurt me, so he told Sam he was done with her for good and that they have no reason to speak to each other anymore. I have no idea if that'll last or if they'll just end up together but I truly don't care what they do anymore. I just want peace. What was Derek's excuse for cheating? He told me that they just accidentally reconnected one night when I was away at my mom's. He was stressed we weren't conceiving and were having miscarriages, so he vented to Sam, and then somehow that led to sex. Disgusting of them both, I know. Feel free to ask anything else and I'll try to answer. Thank you everyone for your support and advice. More updates. I just found out that he is staying with Sam and not at the hotel. He told me it's too expensive to stay at a hotel, and Sam is the only one that'll help him right now. I had a feeling this would happen. Just knowing that they are still probably sleeping together hurts my heart. I talked to a lawyer this morning and we are proceeding with the divorce and Derek agreed to it. It's actually happening and I feel some relief that he's not fighting me on this. My mom leaves on Sunday. I'm scared to be alone. But I go back to work on Monday so I'm hoping it'll be a good distraction. I'll keep updating if anything else happens. Thank you everyone. I am so grateful for you all. Becca's diary. I decided to go through some of Becca's stuff today. I just found her diary in a box in the back of her closet. Would it be wrong to read some of it? I feel like it would help me feel closer to her, but part of me feels like it's wrong too. I haven't told Derek that I found it either, and I'm unsure if I should tell him. What would you do? Update 3 I figured it's been a few days, so I should give a little update. My mom is leaving in a couple hours, so I'll be alone. I'm kind of nervous about it. She helped me stay distracted and kept me going. I'd cow I'm gonna handle her being gone. I go back to work tomorrow, first day back since Becca passed away. I'm looking forward to it, though, because it'll keep me distracted. Also, I did read some of Becca's diary. It made me love her even more. She was such a sweetheart. I went back a few months and saw that she noticed some weird behavior between Derek and Sam. Didn't mention that she knew of the affair, but she just wrote that she thought it was kind of strange that they all three would hang out more than usual, without me. I might read more, but so far I haven't found anything that's disturbing. Just her being a teenager and talking about crushes, fights with friends, happy family memories, etc. Tomorrow I'm also talking to my lawyer so I might have more updates on that. Thanks for the continuous love and support, everyone. Update 4, last update for a while. 
started randomly getting a lot more messages slash comments, so I figured I'd do another little last update. My first week back at work went great. I wasn't expecting it to go so well, but thankfully it did. My coworkers were so helpful and patient with me. On Friday night, I decided I didn't want to stay home all weekend alone, so I decided to drive up to my mom's. It helps I have a three-day weekend, so I can spend more time with her. I'm heading back home tomorrow. Also, for those of you that have messaged me hateful things for reading Becca's diary, I just have to say you aren't in my shoes right now. Telling me I'm a bad mom because I'm reading her diary is just ridiculous. I learned so much more about her, about how caring and sweet she is, and it made me love her even more. It's how I'm able to feel so close to her right now, so please don't tell me I'm a bad parent for just trying to get by one of the hardest times of my life. You have no idea what it's like. I don't have much of an update, so this will be it. I'll come back and update once the divorce happens, though. Thank you to those of you that have been nothing but kind and helpful. You help me feel less alone. I'll forever be grateful. Update 5, Sam saw my Reddit post and is threatening to sue him. Sam made a fake f by profile to message me and tell me she wants to sue me for telling strangers about what happened. Derek supports her, apparently. I don't need this. Am I not allowed to vent about my life to people online? I just want life to get better. I'm so tired. Fuck you, Sam. Fuck you, Derek. Eat it. Sam is in the comments and messaged me on here, too. Blocked her. Update 6, I don't think I can do this anymore. I have been as strong as I can be, but I have been really struggling. So much is going on and I'm just so tired. How can I keep going? I just want to be with Becca. I miss her. I miss her smile. I miss her laugh. I miss how she'd try to make you laugh when you were sad by telling dad jokes. I miss how she liked being in the garden with me. I miss seeing all her new drawings. I miss her beautiful eyes. I miss everything about her. I just want her back. I need her back. Edit. I am okay. I just needed a space to vent. I was getting so many messages asking if I'm alright, and I just wanted to say thank you to those that reached out. I am okay, I will be okay. Some days are harder than others, but I think I'll get through this. I'm so grateful for the little community I have here. Thank you all so much.